What do you want to hear over the next three years Ooh. about how to appeal to, to uh, the, the, what a Liberal Party would do for women? Well, I think there's two things there. The Lib uh, women were the forgotten people by the Liberal Party this election. Women like me who are we've been told we can have it all, we got educated, we're looking after kids, ageing parents, keeping our relationships together. We're tired and we didn't have a voice in Parliament and that's absolutely what the Teals tapped into. But I also think that the issues that we face, it needs to be beyond uh, looking at at issues that impact women, such as childcare or women's health or DV, and they need to stop looking at it like some niche fringe issue that's just for women. These are, uh, you know, we should have policies in place dealing with those issues that are, because they affect everybody. Yeah, it's a really good point, and and it also affects, you know, the boys and girls and people of no gender that are in our families, right? Mm -hmm. About what they see, and this is again, you know, uh, I always think that when you talk about tax, why is that automatically a blokey thing? Why are jobs automatically a blokey thing? You know, I want my little girls to, of course, do whatever mm. the heck they want. And if they want to run a business, they're going to probably have to care about the tax system, right? That's that's the point about broadening it out. Instead, sort of the identitarianism that's kicked in for a while, and I get it now, we're sort of into, you know, the, the granddaughters of the Howard haters that are the ones uh, jumping all over social media at the moment. But, Rita, as we always say, you know, it's, uh, it's believe all women protect all women unless you disagree with me. Well, unless you're a conservative woman, as Catherine found out, the attacks against her were frankly disgusting, vicious, and many of them came from women, including women in the media who bang on about women's issues. Uh, but when it comes to conservative women, then all bets are off. But just one thing I, I, I do want to mention is, uh, if you look at the trend overseas, one thing that parents, whether they're mums or dads, care about deeply is their children's education and also indoctrination. And that's something that the Republicans have tapped into. And uh, but there's a there's just a grassroots movement there where people are switching over from Democrat to Republican based on that issue. And I think that's an opportunity that the coalition has never really uh, tapped into. That, that That's happening in our schools as well. You only have to look at the curriculum to see just how much uh, activism and left-wing ideology is in there. And yet, you know, every now and then they'll have a, a complaint about the curriculum, but really they haven't fought that issue mm. in any meaningful way. Well, and also, here's the thing, right? This is this again, you know, the the upside for us making the point, the downside for the country, is that each way Albo gets pushed around by the hard left Labor governments in Victoria, South Australia, Queensland, the ACT, the Northern Territory, and Western Australia. So when they set the national curriculum, Nobody is a the, 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 the far bulk of those numbers are going to push it hard left, and that's an opportunity for the Liberals to see what they are doing. It's something that they didn't take on in the mm -hmm. fight in the last one. Mm -hmm. So wait, watch and see on so many different policies. Now, if I had told you five years ago that every state in the country was going to legalise euthanasia, you would have said, "I'm sorry, Paul." Now. Interestingly, of course, all of that happened. You can have your views on it, and I'm not going to have the argument about it. But are we about to have the same argument when it comes to cannabis? Now, I'll be very straight up, never touched it in my life, but there's a chance, and it's unlikely, but there's a chance that a political party that is all about the legalising of cannabis might end up as a senator because of preference deals. Now, I still think Pauline Hanson will get there, but wait, watch and see. So I don't want to ask you guys about your personal attitudes towards marijuana. I want to ask you about the overall trend that, Rita, could you see a day in Australia where this was legalised and taxed? That is a distinct possibility. We've seen it in certain US states. We've seen it in parts of Europe. So I wouldn't say it is not... Uh you can't rule it out, but I, I don't think uh, having look at the uh, having had a look at the la latest numbers, that's going to uh, get up. And I don't think that uh, Senate spot's going to get up. Like you said, I think Pauline Hanson is going to get there. But um, it would have been fascinating to have <laughs> a legalised cannabis senator in the Australian Parliament. I mean, they can't be any wackier than some of the other types we've got in there at the moment. Well, I just think, you know, again... 
apart from what we all know the consequences of significant use of uh, marijuana is, if they're going to ban petrol engines, they're going to need to find another way of making up money from the petrol excise. And, of course, right now it's about $14 billion <laughs> when it comes to tobacco. So I'm just saying, obviously, they'll do sugar tax, beer tax and anything else that might be certainly aimed at a certain type of the community. Uh, but, Catherine, what's your thoughts about this, about whether you think it will happen versus whether it should? Well, I think we need to differentiate between decriminalisation and, and deregulation. Uh, I lived in Northern California for a few years, Mendocino County, the biggest export out of the county was cannabis, uh, aside from wine grapes. Uh, and we maybe need to look at those places that have already done it. In, in California, it hasn't worked out well. 90% of the supply is, uh, is illicit. Yeah, good point. Uh, so we need to proceed very cautiously, I think, in this area. New Zealand said no. Uh, so I think we need to give it some real thought. And if we are going to do it, it needs to be gradual. Yeah, oh, no, correct. I I'm just saying... Don't write it off as an issue saying it's never going to come up, right? You, mm -hmm. as, as, as Catherine just said, in New Zealand, it eventually made it its way to basically a plebiscite. Uh, there's people on the ballots all the time. So, again, think where we were five years ago when it comes to euthanasia. So, wait, watch and see. That's not advocacy. It's just a prediction of where I think we're going to end up going and the next debate of the mad left. Ladies, thank you so much. Lovely to see you. Well done, Catherine, for uh, standing up for what matters and we'll continue. Uh, you're always welcome here in the Man Cave, OK? Thank you very much. All right, Rita, we love you, Dunham. We'll see you, of course, uh, Monday night, 9 o'clock, and we'll see you on the outsiders as well.